Uh, yeah, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is great to be alive. Any day is a great day to be alive, to be quite honest with you. And, you know, we've got so much doom and gloom. And I want to ask you guys, has this the worst you have felt about your Dallas Cowboys? Is this the worst? I, I, I'm beginning to feel like everybody is just it's doom and gloom. And what is doom and gloom for the Cowboys season? Here's the reality of the situation. Regardless of what happens or does not happen in free agency, in the draft, and so on, the thing I can say that I can guarantee, I can guarantee one thing about Dak Prescott, and that is Dak Prescott will be here with the Cowboys this year. Because I don't know if all those people like Dan You're Lousy, Dan You're Lousy, who is paid on ESPN, seems to be clueless about a bunch of things, okay? I can understand your point of saying the Cowboys need to move on, maybe from Dak Prescott. It's not one that I buy into, or, or the way I look at it, but you have to at least look at it from the standpoint of, do we want to pay $90 million over the next two years just not to have them? And just say, we're going to turn it over to Trey Lance. Well, that would be ridiculous. At least you, if you're going to have to pay that kind of money, you might as well at least have them here for this year at 55 and then take the other 40 next year. Not saying that that's the best idea because that can probably preclude you from being able to get a few ringers to help your roster. But here's the reason why. And I kept asking myself, and I didn't want to think that this was it. You know, sometimes you know something is there or a reason behind it. Um, but you ignore what's coming down the train tracks. And the reason why it, that, that we, we've been hearing the Jones is talking about, you know, well, we, we, you know, we, 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 we want to get Dak Prescott done and we're going to go ahead and get it done in August. In my mind, <clears throat> financially, if you were really committed to Dak Prescott, you put a ring on it. You go ahead and get the thing done because – we keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And because we continue to wait, it ends up being that it costs us more money. It just does. And it doesn't make any sense because, you know, we're sitting here waiting to get CD done. Justin Jefferson is on the cusp of getting either traded into a new team with a new contract or getting a new contract with the Vikings and it's going to cost you more money when CD says, I want to be the highest, one of the highest paid, if not the highest paid. Well, if somebody blows it out of the water, let's say Minnesota to make them happy pays them 35 million a year, then that just costs you another 5 million. And these are part of the reasons why you have issues with contracts and we want to blame the player. But here is the reason, the reason I believe, and I have to give credit to my brother, but buddy, brother from another mother, Greg, because Greg kind of pointed out to me, he's like, listen, here's the thing. You got Mike McCarthy, okay? Mike McCarthy may not be a great head coach, but he is a great teacher. You can look at the offense with Kellen Moore versus the offense after the first four games, after the bye week with Mike McCarthy. Kellen Moore had a better running attack, betting runners on the roster than what Dak had this year. Now, granted, Dak had a broken thumb and coming back the season before. But you look at the progression of Dak Prescott's efficiency, 36 TDs, 9 interceptions, even though he was sacked 39 times without a running game that you could rely on. Tony Pollard had one 100-yard game. We were middle of the pack with running the football. Generally speaking, if you look at Tony Romo's most efficient year, the best year that we had a chance to win the Super Bowl, was 2014 when DeMarco Murray rushed for 1,800 yards. Because they were 
you know, balanced. You couldn't just say we're going to stop the run and play nickel coverage. You had to worry about putting eight men in the box. All these things are factors <clears throat> in what you do. We did not have that. Tony Pollard was not the feared running back that he was the year before. And Zeke was not here to pound the ball in the middle. But even with that, you saw Dak Prescott, 36 TDs, 4,500 yards passing, nine interceptions. Um, MVP type of season. So the reason behind them waiting on Dak Prescott is they want to see what Trey Lance is going through training camp to try and use that as leverage and see, is it, is it conceivable? Is it conceivable that Trey Lance could be our quarterback of the future? And I'm going to actually say, quite frankly, that that's actually a smart thing to do. Because when you think about football, there's no guarantees in anything. Any play can be your last play. And constantly, it's a conveyor belt of the younger guy who's faster, cheaper, and can do the job that you're doing, and it's about moving on to the next generation. Football gives no Fs. It doesn't matter if you're Roger Staubach because Father Time is undefeated. It doesn't matter if you're Troy Aikman or Tony Romo. It's a natural progression that it's going to be somebody else. In the end, it's all about one thing, and that's that star, the star that's on their helmet. And for the Cowboys, you better be damn sure right that if they think that Trey Lance could be the guy, yeah. And so what you'll probably see is Trey Lance playing a lot in preseason, a lot in preseason. And they're going to get a feel and saying, okay, this guy is viable. And if he is viable, if he does look better than advertised, then it could be, yeah, we're just going to ride through this year with Dak Prescott. And um, we'll start the Trey Lance era the following year. Um, quite frankly, in life, you actually, you know, I'm, I'm not going to condemn the Cowboys for that thinking. Um, you want to be able to keep all options open and on the table so you can move and maneuver with anything. And if you're Dak Prescott, well, that's fine. Because, you know, I got $55 million this year. I've made my money. I have been, you know, offensive rookie of the year as a cowboy with the star on my helmet. I have been NFL man of the year. I have, you know, almost all the records. And if I were Dak Prescott going into the season, I'm looking to try and get – that uh, touchdown record, I think he's 42 away. And I think he's about 4,600 yards, 4,700 yards away from the yardage record. If I'm Dak Prescott, I'm going to do everything I can to bust those records. So if I'm going out the door, I'm going out there where you have to look back and say, the quarterback with the most yards, TDs, and so on, with the least amount of interceptions, is me. And then I'm picking the team that I want to go to that I can get me a ring. So that way I can go back and say, ha, ha, just saying. So look for, regardless, incredible quarterback play this year. So that's all I have to say about that one. Um, I'm going to finish this morning off with uh, – get up and them talking about, you know, Tyron Smith. This is, you know, um, the move that hurt the most for me this offseason. And I, I get it because I've seen a lot of great players come and go. And um, we have the autograph signing show uh, in two weeks. I think it's two weeks. Um, in Chantilly and seeing some of the greats and the legends and stuff. And I always love to go back and support those guys, because when your time's up, most people forget about you, unless you're like Roger Staubach and Drew Pearson and things. But the one that hurt 
I would say, is Tyron Smith going to the Jets? You know, I, I get it. I mean, I've seen Tony Dorsett leave. I've seen Emmett Smith leave, you know, and go elsewhere. It's just something about seeing players that have meant so much to the Cowboys having to end their career elsewhere. It's just something wrong about that one. And they're talking about this one, that this morning. Able to extend Dak this offseason. Then they better win the Super Bowl. I, I think obviously he could sign an extension sometime in season. But the longer this goes, the more likely it is that Dak Prescott is going to get tempted by free agency. And then the Cowboys window will be closed until they find another quarterback. So I think that Dak Prescott's offseason decision is really going to determine the future of the Cowboys for the next five to ten seasons. Graz, what if the Dolphins sign Odell Beckham? That'd be a lot of fun. I mean, look, he'd basically be their third receiver at this point, right? He's 31 years old. Did you know that over the last four years, Odell Beckham has caught a total of 127 passes? Uh, that includes postseason. So at this point in his career, this would be a great spot for him with Tyreek Hill and Jaden Waddle already on the roster, a creative offensive play caller and Mike McDaniel that could find ways to use him effectively. I think it'd be a neat place for Odell Beckham to end up. Dano, what if the Jets have... Two 1,000-yard receivers next season. It's hard to not put them in the AFC Championship game then. That would mean that many, if not all of them, stayed healthy, specifically on the offensive side of the football. We know that defense is going to be one of the top five defenses in the NFL. And if Garrett Wilson has somebody opposite him to play wide receiver that can be impactful and draw mm -hmm. some attention, like a Mike Williams in their new acquisition, it means that their pass game flourishes. Brees Hall in the backfield it would be hard not to put this roster into the AFC title game. You know, their newly acquired uh, left tackle, Tyron Smith, believes that the Jets have the weapons not only to win, but to win it all. Take a listen. They have all the pieces together right now. They're making, you know, the final pieces in this offseason uh, to produce, uh, you know, a team that could, you know, could go all the way. Uh, all right. So I guess it, 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 I, I, I got I to ask going. The Jets offseason, their moves makes them – what? The biggest finger crossed team in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, it, it, they can exactly. only stay healthy. Everybody in this yep. building, the guy who's yep. usually <laughs> sitting in this chair, this is, yep. I can only <laughs> stay healthy. If they can if somehow catch that fortunate bug, they'll be really, really, really good. I mean, this is the most talented Jets football team, certainly in my lifetime. Okay. I'm 40 years old. And you look at a guy, Aaron Rodgers, is, while coming off of the Achilles and Certainly want to see how he's going to be. I expect him to be on the field relatively the same player that we've grown accustomed to. This offensive line has the chance, if they're healthy, to be a very good offensive line. I talked about Brisol. It's a good tight end unit. Two wide receivers, if Mike Williams stays healthy, can be very impactful. So it's just a giant dice roll. I mean, the biggest dice roll in the league is Tyron Smith at his age and his injury history, protecting Aaron Rodgers at 40 years old coming off the Achilles. <laughs> But it, it's a fingers crossed situation. And if it, they somehow make it work, they're going to be a very good football team. Nick, what do you think? Yeah, first of all, I want to see the rest of that painting behind Tyron Smith. That, that thing looked amazing. <laughs> Second of all, okay. I think uh, okay. Dan nailed it. Uh, they need to stay healthy. And I think it's also possibility Aaron Rodgers isn't that that we all expect to see. He didn't play at all last year. He's obviously gotten a year older and his, uh, he's coming off Achilles injury. The year before that, he had some injury issues, but he still wasn't the Aaron Rodgers that we all come to know and respect as a passer. So I think there are lots of things that could go wrong for this team. That's true of a lot of teams, but the probability is higher here. And then there's also the point of coaching. It's one thing that I've always recognized is that coaching's value goes up in the postseason. And we have not seen this, this coaching staff tested in that time period, and they haven't proven that they're able to excel in that um, under that pressure situation. So I think the ceiling's very high for them, but the floor is pretty low too. Jim Rods, what do you think? What do you think on this? I there you go. I'm gonna leave it right there. But it's it's sad days, you know. Whenever you lose great players and stuff. And let me, as I get ready to get out of here, because I'm, uh, don't forget we've got our five o'clock live stream. Um, I will be actually back at my man cave. I've got to go pick up a whole bunch of. Uh, laminate flooring for uh, a house I'm working on and stuff. So I'm going to be hitting up the road. But shout out to my wonderful bride, Miss Tracy, um, as well as um, 
Queen Bella because Queen Bella really introduced me to the whole concept of sublimation printing. Uh, Queen Bella has done like this. When I saw this, I was completely amazed because this feels like a piece of glass. It's so smooth and the, the artwork and stuff on it is freaking insane. But we've got ourselves a sublimation printer and this is one of the early shirts. We're still learning it and everything else. The colors are freaking insane, and we're definitely going to be doing an incredible draft shirt uh, for the draft trip this year. And uh, I just can't wait because right now, today, today, we are exactly one month away from going to the draft. And we'll be there live reporting, giving you the sights, the sounds, and everything that's going on at the NFL draft. And Lord knows. It is going to be important for the Dallas Cowboys to have a great draft. As always, I appreciate you guys, and I will see you on the road. Peace. Those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? Are you just one that sits on the sideline to talk about other people, or can you step up?